Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here today. I'm joined uh, today uh, by Dr. Joe Cantor of the Department of Health. Uh, he will speak in a moment. I also have some other individuals with me today, um, and they'll be available uh, at the end should you have any questions that you want to direct towards them. Uh, last night, President Biden approved my request for a federal emergency declaration for Tropical Storm Nicholas. Uh, this authorizes FEMA to coordinate disaster relief efforts across 64 parishes, but it, but it also gives us the flexibility to move federal personnel and assets that are in the state uh, with respect to Ida out of the parishes that were approved for Ida and anywhere in Louisiana that we might need uh, to move them in order to prepare for and very quickly respond uh, to uh, Tropical Storm Nicholas. I did have an opportunity to speak earlier today with Administrator Criswell. She is the Administrator of FEMA. Uh, we discussed the ongoing uh, uh, response to Ida, but also Nicholas uh, as it has moved into Louisiana. And of course, we've had probably way too many conversations uh, lately, but I do appreciate uh, the communication and her uh, continued commitment uh, to Louisiana. Uh, Tropical Storm Nicholas uh, made landfall early this morning on the Texas coast. At that time, I believe it was a hurricane. It was a Category 1 hurricane. It is now moving slowly into southwest Louisiana. Uh, it is expected to uh, stall over Louisiana, sort of dissipate, uh, but I'm told by the National Weather Service that we can expect rain uh, through the weekend. The current forecast shows the system bringing a high, I'm sorry, four to six inches of rainfall in southwest Louisiana and a high risk of excessive rainfall in southeast Louisiana of six to 10 inches. Um, and of course, there's a moderate risk of excessive rainfall uh, through central Louisiana as well, uh, four to six inches. The uh, bottom line is much of Louisiana central and south Louisiana is projected to receive a lot of rain. Uh, that has already started. Uh, and one of the most uh, distressing parts of this is uh, the heaviest rain now is, is expected to fall in areas that were most devastated by Hurricane Ida uh, down in southeast Louisiana, as you can see from uh, this graphic. Uh, that's particularly challenging uh, because many individuals live in homes that are not, uh, have not yet been repaired um, and not yet really even been uh, temporarily uh, repaired to the point where they can withstand rain and so forth. Uh, many of these homes have not had power restored and that restoration effort uh, may actually be set back if the weather is too inclement to allow the, the crews to go out and continue their work. Uh, and then we also suspect that there will be some of these homes and businesses that have begun to receive power again after Hurricane Ida they may lose it because of Nicholas, because all of those um, electric companies have yet to restore the full redundancy and resiliency of their systems. Uh, so obviously this is not what we would want to have happen in Louisiana. Uh, there's also a marginal to severe risk of tornadoes. Uh, these are warnings that will come quickly, so please be prepared to the extent that you can. Make sure that you keep your iPhones uh, charged uh, and and on uh, with the volume turned up uh, and close enough to you so that you can hear uh, any warnings that may go out over that system. It's also very important that individuals not drive on flooded roadways. Uh, as you should know, it doesn't take much water in terms of depth or current to actually move a vehicle completely off the road into a ditch or a waterway uh, and Quite often, we, we do have uh, individuals who drown, uh, especially when we have uh, these types of rain events where the primary risk uh, is through flash flooding. And that's what we're uh, seeing with respect to Nicholas. We also would encourage you, uh, please do not drive around barricades. Don't ignore high water warning signs. And if you see water in the road, if there's not a sign and not a barricade, that doesn't mean that it's safe to proceed. Uh, only do that if you are absolutely certain that you can do so safely. Uh, 
clearly we don't want to have to have any uh, reports of confirmed deaths related to Tropical Storm Nicholas. Uh, because of the weather forecast that we have available to us right now, there will be office closures tomorrow in 38 parishes. This is a combination of Ida closures and Nicholas, and of course some, some of the parishes are closed for uh, both of these. And I'm not going to go over the 38 names, but you can, you can see the 38 uh, parishes there. We are uh, unfortunately still reporting deaths related to Hurricane Ida, including an additional death since my last briefing yesterday afternoon. Uh, a 70 year old male in St. Tammany Parish died due to heat from an extended power outage. Uh, this brings the total number of Hurricane Ida related deaths to 29. Uh, of the 29, 13 of those are attributable to the heat and six or attributable to carbon monoxide poisoning. We currently have about 95,000 power outages attributable to Ida. Uh, we're also tracking about 13,500 outages related to Nicholas, and those are primarily in areas uh, that had been restored to power uh, after Ida passed through, um, but the gusting winds are causing some uh, some of those fixes to, to actually go out again. In anticipation of rainfall from Hurricane uh, Nicholas, uh, CPRA is keeping all state issued pumps on the ground in Lafitte, Plaquemine, St. Bernard, uh, and Lafouche parishes. Uh, they're they're going to stay in place until the storm passes so that those parishes may utilize them to dewater again uh, if necessary. CPRA is currently reaching out to all the parishes to get a prioritized list of drainage canals and outfall channels uh, that need to be cleared of debris post Ida, uh, the Natural Resource Conservation Service, the NRCS, and FEMA uh, will then execute uh, this mission and, and we're looking forward to that. Uh, just like we need to get debris off of our roadways after a storm, we certainly need to get it out of our drainage ditches canals and even our navigable waterways. There currently are 8,093 service members activated in support of current operations in Louisiana. Uh, I can tell you the National Guard has positioned assets all along South Louisiana in preparation uh, to respond uh, to Hurricane Nicholas, now Tropical Storm uh, Nicholas, uh, and any flash flooding that may occur. Uh, to that end, they've staged 80 high water vehicles, 23 boats, and 15 aircraft. There are 169 wildlife and fisheries agents on standby, each with a vehicle and a boat ready to respond uh, into the affected areas as needed. And the state fire marshal likewise has 30 boats staged with uh, 75 more uh, individuals if needed. Uh, four of their boat teams have been shifted to Baton Rouge and four remain and Lafayette. We also have state urban search and rescue teams on standby with more than 200 individuals ready uh, should they be called upon to execute their search and rescue mission. As of this morning, there were still 1,130 individuals being sheltered in Louisiana across 18 shelters because of Hurricane Ida. Uh, we, we're well into uh, the reentry program for those parishes that are able to receive their evacuees, and every day we're moving. Uh, bus loads of individuals back uh, to parishes, uh, principally those that have been restored to power and water. Uh, but we're working very closely with parishes to make sure that we're bringing individuals back uh, as they are able to receive them. If you need shelter from Tropical Storm Nicholas, please heed the guidance of local officials. Uh, you get that information out of your parish Office of Emergency Preparedness. Uh, but you can also text LA Shelter to 898 211 or dial 211 uh, to make sure that you have the latest information. FEMA has approved more than 285,000 applications for disaster assistance, uh, and that involves more than $329 million approved to help Louisiana residents. Total registrations exceed 600,000 at this time for individual assistance. More than 9,900 households are checked into the Transitional Shelter Assistance Program, 
and that involves more than 28,000 uh, household members that are uh, sheltered uh, in hotel rooms through this program. More than 55,000 survivors have registered for the Blue Roof program. Uh, right at 800 uh, Blue Roofs have been installed uh, up to now. Uh, you should visit blueroof.us if you want to apply and you can do that online at blueroof.us or you can call 888-ROOF-BLUE. That's 888-766-3258. I'm gonna quickly hit uh, today's COVID numbers and then I'm gonna ask Dr. Canner to come up and then I'll come back up uh, on the backside of his presentation. Today we're reporting 2,200 new cases of COVID uh, very sadly, we're also reporting a very high number of new deaths, 121 new deaths for a total of 13,241. Uh, 1,612 individuals remain hospitalized from COVID across the state of Louisiana. That's down 19 uh, from yesterday's hospitalization report. I think with that, I'm gonna ask Dr. Canner to come up and then as I mentioned I'll be back on the on the following Dr. Canner I would ask if you have questions for Dr. Canner go ahead and ask those while he is uh, up at the podium afternoon thank you governor thank you for your leadership um, I'll touch briefly on issues related to the storms and then I'll talk about COVID after that. Um, as the governor mentioned, the, the fatality count related to Ida is, is now up to 29, unfortunately, with the addition of a 70-year-old male from St. Tammany Parish who died from uh, excessive heat and power outage. Our thoughts are with, with uh, his family. Um, looking ahead to uh, Tropical Storm Nicholas, we want to do as best a job as we can to minimize preventable deaths. You know, some deaths in a storm are just not preventable, but many of them are, and typically more than not in our history of storms. So I want to hit on a couple of the high points. As the governor also said, you know, we believe this is going to be primarily a, a, a rain event. So we are anticipating isolated flooding, and we want to be cautious in activities that we know are risky. The first and foremost of those is driving on the roadways. Um, I'll tell you, during the floods in May of this past year, four out of the five deaths that we had were people who got in accidents on the road, whether they hit another car, a stationary object, or drove off into an embankment. Um, so I have to ask people, throughout the next couple of days, as this tropical storm and the associated bands drops a lot of water throughout the state, please, if you do not need to be on the roadway, don't. Only travel on by road if it's absolutely necessary. Again, four out of our five deaths from the flooding we had back in May were due to people being on the roadway. So if there's any way to avoid traveling by car over the next couple of days, we would ask you to please, please do that. I'll also ask you to continue to check on your old and otherwise vulnerable neighbors. 13 of the 29 deaths from Hurricane Ida so far were related to excessive heat and power outage, particularly in elderly or vulnerable individuals. And every one of those individuals had somebody in the state um, who, who cared about them. So do not assume that your neighbors and loved ones are okay. Do not assume that they have power just because you have power. And I'll ask you as inclement winter comes in and moves through, please check on the folks around you who are elderly and vulnerable. We have medical special needs shelters set up in multiple locations throughout the state. They are open, they're gonna to continue to be open. EMS services are online. The point being, we can come help. We can come help, help folks that get in a bind, particularly folks that are reliant on oxygen or have other special needs. But if we don't know about them, if local authorities don't know about them, it's not a lot that we can do. So please check on your friends neighbors and relatives throughout this storm. Make sure that they're okay. Call 911, ask for help if they're not. And also, again, I wanted to mention generator safety of the 29 fatalities connected to Ida so far. Six have been 
carbon monoxide poisoning related to unsafe generator usage. In addition to those six deaths in the two weeks, we've had over 150 hospital visits for carbon monoxide poisoning. As an ER doctor myself, let me tell you, this is not something to mess around with. Carbon monoxide often doesn't give you a warning before it kills you. And it doesn't just kill you, it kills everyone in the household, oftentimes at the exact same time. So if you're gonna use a generator, remember, always outdoors, always well away from your house, at least 20 feet, ideally more. Um, keep it well away from windows, air intakes, doors. And um, to reduce the fire risk, be conscientious about the type of extension cord you're running to it. It's gotta be of a thick enough gauge to handle the load. And if you're not sure what you're doing, ask someone who does know what they're doing. I wanted to touch briefly on the availability of um, prescription medications in pharmacies right now, particularly in the aftermath of Hurricane Ida. Um, there's actually been quite a lot of progress in pharmacies reopening in the past week. So it's most acute in uh, Region 3, the River Parishes, Assumption, Lafourche, St. Charles, St. James, St. John, St. Mary, and Terrebonne. I'll tell you, in those seven parishes, there are currently 26 pharmacies open as of this morning. Um, all of the independent pharmacies in that area are open. All of the Walgreens are open except for two locations in Homa and one in Thibodeau. All of the CVS locations are open except for one location in Homa and one in Luling. And all of the Walmart locations are open. So odds are, if you live in an, an affected parish, your pharmacy is now open. Um, there was a question yesterday, and I apologize, I don't remember who asked it, about insulin specifically. And there was a tight supply of insulin the past couple of days. This was specifically to re related to the number of people who, due to losing power and having temperature excursions on their own insulin, had to go refill that. We've spoken to the major pharmacies in the area. They all are expecting resupplies of insulin today and tomorrow and expect to have enough supply for everyone who needs. So if you were unable to fill your insulin, please try that again today and tomorrow. You should be able to fill it. And we have assurances those pharmacies will have enough stock on hand going forward that that shouldn't be an issue anymore. If you have Medicaid and Louisiana Medicaid and need to refill your prescriptions earlier than you normally would because they were lost or damaged in the storm, you can do that without any penalty or without any copay right now. You can actually do that anywhere across the country, no matter where you have evacuated to. So Medicaid recipients can refill their prescriptions early if they were lost or damaged in a storm without having to pay any associated co-pays right now. If you are uninsured and need assistance refilling prescription medicines related to this, the storm, we have requested, and the federal government has in turn activated a program called the Emergency Prescription Assistance Program, EPAP. This is now open and available to anyone who is uninsured and needs to refill prescriptions. It will provide those prescriptions free of charge. So if you reside in an affected area in Louisiana and need assistance refilling prescriptions and you're uninsured, no matter where you are currently in the US, you can get those filled free of charge through this program. You need to call the EPAP hotline, it's a federal hotline, give them your information and enroll. Once you do that, you'll be able to get your prescriptions refilled. I'm gonna give that number. This will also be sent out as a press release later in the afternoon. It's 1-855-793-7470. That's the Emergency Prescription Assistance Program, specifically for people who are uninsured and need help refilling prescriptions that might have been lost or damaged in the storm. As we prepare for Tropical Storm Nicholas, I'll let you know that the testing and vaccination services um, provided through the National Guard in Region 5, that's the Greater Lake Charles area, are gonna be closed today and tomorrow, specifically for the storm. There may be additional sites outside of Region 5 closed if conditions deteriorate. And we're gonna play that by year, depending on how the local weather is going. I also wanna let people know that we have expanded the number of locations in the state that people can receive monoclonal antibody treatment. If they are positive with COVID, and not yet sick enough to be in the hospital. Again, monoclonal antibodies are specifically designed for people who have mild or moderate illness to keep them from becoming severe. 
to keep them from needing hospitalization. Once you're sick enough to be in a hospital, it's too late to receive monoclonal antibodies. As of today, we have added three new sites statewide. One is in the Rain Civic, Civic Center. Another is in the Bird Regional Hospital at Deer Creek in Leesville. And the third is in the Rapides Coliseum. Tomorrow, the um, Clinton Alternative Learning Center in Clinton will be added as a site. And on Thursday, the Burton Coliseum in Lake Charles will be added as a site as well. In the coming weeks, we'll add 13 additional new sites to those five for a total of 18 new state-operated sites. These are in addition to the over 100 sites that are currently offering monoclonal antibodies. These what will be 18 state-operated sites will be open seven days a week, 8A to 6P, and referrals go through your physician or your care provider. So there's a clinical hotline that providers will call to refer patients in. Bottom line is if you get informed that you're positive for COVID. If you have a positive test, your immediate next step should be to call your medical provider. Ask them if monoclonal antibodies will be indicated in you. They're particularly indicated in people who are at high risk for complications, but they're only good if they're given right away. If you wait a few days, they really lose their efficacy. So if you find out that you're COVID positive, your immediate next move should be call your medical provider, ask if they think monoclonal antibodies are right for you, and if so, ask for their help to refer you in. You know, finally, um, Governor mentioned the, the, the COVID numbers. I'll, I'll re reiterate, we're thankful that we are now declining from what was our fourth and, and most severe surge yet, but we still remain at a very, very high level. We're thankful we're going in the right direction. Hospitalizations are down to just over 1,600. And that's down from a peak of 3,022 in the middle of August. But the absolute level is still very, very high. And the CDC continues to rank all 64 parishes in the highest of four categories when it comes of your risk to encounter COVID, your community transmission risk. So please be cognizant of that. The governor mentioned that, unfortunately, today we are reporting 121 new COVID deaths. And I'll tell you, since Ida made landfall, compared to the 29 storm-related deaths that we know about, we have reported out 882 COVID deaths. So this remains a real threat, albeit sometimes a invisible threat. We are encouraged that we are declining in our rates, and we want to keep it that way. There's no guarantee that we will. So please remember to take COVID precautions, and particularly if you are finding yourself around people outside of your family unit because of the storm or for any other reason, masking and distancing are the best ways to keep you protected in that immediate moment. And getting vaccinated is the best way to keep you protected looking forward to the future. I'll pause there, but be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Yeah, you know, both were um, temporarily impacted. Our testing volume went down uh, for about two weeks, as one might expect, and the vaccination volume went down as well. Both of those are now picking back up, and the majority of the, the testing sites throughout the state, those operated by the National Guard and others, are back in operation. Again, a, a handful will be offline in Region 5, the Lake Charles area today and tomorrow. We hope that's it. If the weather is worse in other areas, we'll have to take a couple other offline. But by and large, they're, they're coming back. I think the larger issue is um, just where people's minds are. And you know, if, if, if you had loss in this storm, it, uh, understandably, COVID probably isn't the first thing that you're thinking about right now. But it's still as much a risk to you and your family, even if you don't see it right now. So I think that's what our challenge is, is to continue to remind people that we're going to be at risk, at liability, of having another surge like this as a community going forward until we can get more of our relatives and neighbors vaccinated. Okay. Thank you. Please stay safe today and tomorrow.
Thank you, Dr. Kenner. And uh, I will take some questions and remind you I've got some individuals over here. Major General uh, Keith Waddell, uh, Colonel Lamar Davis with the State Police. We've got John Long from FEMA, uh, Chip Klein with CPRA, and we also have Jim Wascom, uh, who runs GOSEP for us. Yes, sir. Yeah, because of Nicholas? Yeah. yeah, I think it's a function of what they are told by their uh, local officials, but also watching the the weather forecasts on, on the National Weather, uh, um, I should say the Weather Channel or local news, um, and, and to see what the conditions are. Uh, obviously, we're talking about a, a threat of, of excessive rain and the flash flooding that's associated with that. And by the way, river flooding is, is possible too. Uh, and so individuals typically have a, a good sense of when there's been enough rain in the area that these hazards are going to be uh, present. And when they're present, just please don't get out there and drive uh, in them unnecessarily and don't ever drive through water that you don't know how deep it is. And I'd remind you to, to use 511LA.org. Uh, it has real-time information about road closures. Uh, just be mindful that it's always possible that as a motorist, you're going to beat DOTD to the spot and you're going to discover the road is impassable. And you might discover it after you've been unable uh, to get through. So just asking people to be very careful and monitor the guidance they're given from their local officials. Um, and, and anytime you have a storm like this, it's really uh, not a good idea to go out sightseeing and see what what kind of damage you know was visited upon your neighborhood because that's typically at the same time uh, that first responders are trying to get out and answer calls to individuals who uh, may need uh, some assistance with an emergency and, and that sort of thing. Yes, sir. Uh, well, I'm going to ask uh, either John Long and or Chip to come up. Uh, it's, a, it's a process that you go through where the NRCS uh, typically would be tasked uh, to, to uh, run the program, uh, emergency EWP, watershed. yep, the emergency watershed program, uh, and, and they would get tasked in order to uh, approve and then pay for the efforts to get debris. And this can be cars, it can be uh, trees, it can be construction and, and demolition debris, uh, it could be swamp grass, you name it, uh, out of ditches and canals and, and, and laterals and, and so forth. Um, and then if they are unable to do it or if they don't have the funding uh, available, uh, then they, they can get with FEMA and FEMA will take over uh, that responsibility. What we're doing right now through the CPRA is we're working with all the parishes that were impacted by Ida and have these problems. Uh, we're getting their priorities uh, from them, which, which canals, which waterways, and, and so forth, uh, have the debris in, in the highest order of, pr of priority that needs to be removed, uh, and then working to get uh, the NRCS to either undertake that mission or to let uh, the parish and FEMA know that for whatever reason it can't, and then we'll try to get a tasking out of FEMA uh, through uh, the public assistance and the emergency protective measures, because we still have uh, to, to clear this debris in order to make sure that additional uh, damage isn't sustained because of weather events such as Nicholas that we're currently getting, or another storm that may come after Nicholas. But we expect to have hope and, 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 and expect as well uh, to have uh, some resolution on this uh, within the next day or so. Is there anything else that we need to add to that? Uh, I think you covered it, Governor. Okay. Right. Look, thank you all very much for continuing to cover this. We'll, we'll let you know uh, tomorrow if there'll be a press conference. It'll depend on what, what happens overnight. Uh, I do want to encourage people to, to take the threats from Nicholas very seriously. Obviously, if you and your family uh, are not fully recovered from Ida, uh, then, then you have a heightened sense of, of vulnerability here and, and, and probably are more likely to take this seriously. Uh, other individuals may not do that uh, initially, at least, because they see that it's not a hurricane. I just want to remind you that 
it wasn't even a named storm uh, in 2016 that caused massive uh, flooding across most of the state of Louisiana. It was Hurricane Ida long after it ceased being a hurricane that actually resulted in the death of more than 60 people in the Northeast and caused catastrophic uh, flash flooding. Uh, so we've been given a forecast across uh, central and south Louisiana that calls for an awful lot of rain. Uh, and that forecast is shifting over time and we have to be very careful to make sure that we're up to date on, on what the most recent forecast is. But if you live in south Louisiana, you can expect a lot of rain. Uh, you should anticipate, uh, anticipate flash flooding and potentially river flooding. Uh, this is a very serious uh, storm, particularly in those areas that were so uh, heavily impacted by Hurricane Ida. So let's continue to be good neighbors. Let's prepare ourselves and our families as best we can. Let's check in on our neighbors, especially the older uh, neighbors and those that have special needs. Uh, and, then, and then let's be safe. Let's not do anything that causes an unreasonable risk of harm to ourselves and to others. Uh, and that means don't get out sooner than you should and drive around. Uh, it also means don't spread COVID unnecessarily. Uh, still an awful lot of COVID out there and transmission that's happening uh, and, and so forth. So let's continue to work together and I'm sure that we're gonna get through this uh, and, and I'm praying that, that we'll get through this uh, in better fashion uh, than might be the case if, if, uh, if people aren't uh, sufficiently careful. So thank you all very much and we'll let you know about the next press conference.